You are listening to CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. Coming up next, a live performance and conversation with Elcon, whose latest album, Insecurities in Being, was released on May 25th and is currently the number one record on CFRU's weekly charts. Also of note, the following performance is being transmitted as a radio show on both 93.3 FM and CFRU.ca, and it's also being live-streamed from our scientifically designed green screen Dream Machine Facility at CFRU HQ. You can watch this happening right now or later, if you like, on CFRU's YouTube channel. So whatever your platform, sit back and enjoy our time with Elcon. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? It's going really well. Thanks, Vish. It's nice to have you here at CFRU with all your gear. Mm-hmm. I don't travel light. You don't travel light. What do you got in there, by the way? What's, what's going on? Too many things. <laughs> uh, too many things. I don't know. I've got like a little Ableton rig, uh, but then also a guitar and a heavy amp and some pedals. Right. So it's too many things, but not that many people. No. Normally you would have how many people with you for something like this? Uh, it varies. I, lately we've been playing as a five-piece band. Um, but it's just me today. Yeah, well, it's enough. If it's I might enough. say, <laughs> it's enough just to have you here. And and by the way, congratulations on this new uh, record, Insecurities in Being. You must be very proud of yourself. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm happy that it's released. Uh, a lot of work went into it. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that it's out there. Yeah, and it's being received very well. And like uh, as we're speaking, it is the number one album here at CFRU, so mm-hmm. it is Thank getting you, a, a well. It's getting a lot of love here, and I think uh, justifiably we're going to talk about the record and and you as we go. Uh, but we're also very lucky because you brought all that stuff, and you're going to play some songs for us, right? Yes. So do you want to begin by playing uh, the first song of this performance and letting us know what that song might be? Sure. Um, the first song of this performance is a song called Cogs Rye. Uh, which is on the new record, um, but a song that I've been playing live for a number of years. All right, this is Elcon for the live performance of Cogs Awry. <laughs> Oh, no. 
live on CFRU. That was Elcon with Cogs Awry from the uh, beautiful new record, uh, Insecurities in Being. Uh, Lisa, that was wonderful. Thank you. I think my amp is very buzzy, so. It was a little buzzy. Was like I, a cool new. I think your amp, your <laughs> amp is a lot like you in that <laughs> you are also buzzy around here these days. Number one record in all, you know. Yeah. Everything's got to be buzzy. That was uh, really great, and I, I you know, I, I have to ask you about this lyric that you repeated because it's something that resonates uh, with me these days. Lately, I'm trying to find the answer to being all right. Uh, where where did that come from, so to speak? Um, came from the universe, I guess. I don't know. I, It's actually a line from a song on my last record, Moon Milk. Um, in the song The Dinosaurs, I sing that line or that lyric is is part of that song and um when i was in belfast doing my masters uh, i i was playing this song on the piano and it just kind of happened <laughs> uh and stuck you mean the, the lyric happened the lyric happened yeah huh okay but it obviously speaks to something within you some yes i mean i think yeah, a lot of this record and a lot of existence <laughs> is just uh, trying to navigate being a human. Um, so I think I'm always trying to find the answer to being all right. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I have to say I'm with you on that one. I don't think you're alone there either. Uh, you mentioned you did a, a master's in Belfast. That's interesting. What were you studying there? Uh, I was studying sonic arts. I have a master's in sonic arts sounds like I'm a magician um <laughs> but uh yeah I was very lucky to receive help from the Canada Council to to do a a master's over there so you're you're a master's in it's not in music per se it's in the sonic arts generally yes um it was a pretty open program but um sound art studies kind of encompass uh, like soundscape studies, installation work, um, electroacoustic compositions. Like my thesis piece was uh, for 32 speakers and uh, using samples of a really old synthesizer. Um, but yeah, a lot of talk about sound and qualities of sound and manipulating sound. That's cool. So where, where, like, where did that interest develop? Do you, where are you from again? Um, I grew up near Smithers, B.C., which is in northern B.C. Right. Um, and so you got into, you got into, is there anything about Smithers that would, that that place sounds nice. Just the sound nice. of it. It's just yeah. sonically sounds like it would be a nice place to live. It is. It's a very beautiful mountainous valley. Um, there's a lot of music and art there, um, which was definitely a big part of uh being here right now um I think I've always been excited about sound and production and it's never really been kind of like a separate thing for me uh with songwriting it's all kind of the same uh just being excited about sounds and being excited about putting sounds together and sometimes they're in a song form and sometimes they're in a weird uh instrumental synthesizer piece or right. field recordings or whatever right so how far away is smithers from like the nearest metropolis smithers is about 13 hour drive north from uh vancouver um the closest big city i guess would be prince george and that's like seventy thousand. right um so it's pretty isolated um i was very lucky to have a fiddle mentor i was a fiddler growing up uh, and uh, Oliver Schroer, uh, who is from Toronto, um, started teaching fiddle camps in Smithers. And uh, he was kind of pretty, pretty important piece of my eyes and ears being open to new sounds and new ways of writing music and is the reason that I moved to Toronto. Wow. Well, Oliver was a tremendous force and i got to interview him a couple times and uh he, he passed away unfortunately um 
Were, were you at his final concert by chance? I was. I was crying the whole time. Yeah. I felt really badly for the people beside me because I just, I thought I would be okay, but like literally the first note I started crying and it was, I cried the whole time. It was very difficult. This was, I believe it was at Trinity St. Paul's, right? Yes. Yeah, it was a hard <laughs> show to be at on some level, but it was also beautiful very beautiful yeah. and inspirational and i'm i'm i did not know that i didn't know that um that's you know we would have been probably some similar rooms at some point in our lives but i had no idea about this fact yeah and you and i have known each other quite a long time now and this has never come up so it's another this is why we do these podcast <laughs> interview things <laughs> exactly it's true it's true so i asked about smithers uh and it's and its relative location because i assume you didn't have access to people coming through town and playing shows necessarily or is that wrong uh yes and no like there's a folk festival that happens there the midsummer music festival um every year it's still going um so definitely exposed to a lot of like hippie folk stuff um i didn't really like i hadn't heard radiohead until i moved here um so i kind of had a lot of catching up to do sonically um wait a minute you had like uh radio and tv i didn't have a tv you didn't have a tv at all i didn't have a tv at all my parents were hippies and so i didn't have a tv which is probably why i started writing songs because i was i lived in the country and i was super bored um so you don't have like certain cultural references like if i say to you uncle phil banks uncle philip banks do you know who that is i don't that is the the patriarch of the the TV show Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, I missed a lot of stuff. You didn't miss much with that show. <laughs> Not a but great I show. But I can't I can't finish a crossword puzzle probably. Right. Um, does that feel like a? Does that ever get you down that you don't a have a bit? This? Yeah, I guess it did a bit. I don't know. Um, yeah, it didn't. I just missed a bunch of that stuff and. Yeah, but don't just, you find these days that it maybe doesn't matter? Like, I mean, are, do you do you keep up with culture now, or is yes. that you do? Yeah, I'm pretty. I, I like I'm up with TV now. Um, yeah, I think it's uh it's interesting because there's a lot of bands that um, my peers really enjoy just kind of through nostalgia that I kind of yeah. missed, and I feel like I can't, like I might never enjoy in the same way because i don't have the nostalgic memories but that's attached think (laughs) about all the think about all the storage space your your mind has in it that isn't cluttered by all that stuff it's true like you have are you nostalgic for anything from your childhood in terms of a cultural thing uh like do you like oh i well you didn't watch tv i didn't watch tv i don't know like i grew up on a small piece of land um and my parents are like big gardeners I guess my mom's from Switzerland so I have like some Swiss kind of like memories of going to like the Swiss picnic and right hanging out with a bunch of Swiss people um you know what's all the rage now Swiss chard I, yeah, I can't is it? everyone's talking about Swiss chard really? all the time yeah I feel like that's old news. Like I knew. Well, you would know it because your mother's Swiss. Maybe (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, she grew it. She grew it. (laughs) Now you can't go anywhere without someone trying to offer you some Swiss chard. It's just the way the world works. I thought kale was trending. Yeah, kale's kind of trending downwards now. Now it's all about the Swiss Mm. chard. Just leaves. We're just eating different kinds of greens, greens and leaves. I think it's important. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. I had no idea about this. Well, I want to talk more about. you and your work, but uh, I wonder if we should go to another song sure. uh, from this record, Insecurities in Being, and uh, see where, where that takes us. And I wondered if you can uh, let us know what you're going to play. Okay, I am going to play uh, a song called You Are Right, and that's, I guess it was the first single from this record, um, mostly written on a synthesizer borrowed from somebody in Guelph. So that's a cool Guelphin. Do you want to actually name check them or is there some controversy? Sure, no, no, no. Uh, my friend Clayton um, spends a lot of time at garage sales and on Kijiji and he lent us a synthesizer called the Sinki. Uh, I think it's from the 70s. It's very rare uh, and I think he was hoping that we would buy it and I feel like I really should have, but um, I didn't have the money <laughs> and now it lives in Brooklyn. Oh, it's in Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn, yeah. He found 
he found somebody that would pay what he wanted. Right, but it's on your record. It's on my record. Okay. But so, it's not in my life. Right. So the ghost of the... Of the the ghost of the Sinki. Okay. This is a sad song. <laughs> oh, man. All right. This is uh, You Were Right by Alcon uh, happening live at CFRU. Live at CFRU, that was Elcon with You Were Right. Uh, Elcon is the uh, a master of the sonic arts, as you <laughs> could hear there, and that was uh, remarkable. Uh, Lisa, great job. Thank you. That song, uh, I have to say, was a little weird. That song was weird? Did you not think it was a little strange? It seemed to, at the end there, it flickered. It did all sorts of strange oh, things. Yeah. Like I thought it was a, there was a beat, and then there wasn't a beat, and then there was like weird 
synthetic sounds coming in and out, and uh, it was it made me uh, uh, uncomfortable in a good way. But okay, I, well I, that's good. It stirred you something. Made me worried. No, no, no. I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't mean to <laughs> disparage it. I, I just. I think weird is good. Okay. You seem to have an approach to pop music that is uh, on a slightly askew, slanted. Like it's not. Like that was that could be construed as like an electro pop song, right? I'm trying to make pop music. It's just not working. Why is that? And what's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> Do you actually want to make pop music? Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I just I'm just making stuff. I'm not I'm never trying to be intentionally experimental or weird, I guess is what I wanna say. Yeah. Um I want everybody to like my music <laughs> um i'm not trying to there's like, no reason why they wouldn't obscure. <laughs> right right um i guess a weird thing about that song is and a weird thing about learning how to play it live is that um i wasn't like i was actually like playing that on an analog synthesizer and it wasn't exactly i was adjusting the speed uh in real time rather than like looping things on a grid so it's kind of out of time hmm. uh, which I think gives you an unsettling feeling or it's just it sounds different because it's not totally in yeah but it makes it hard to like map it to a grid in Ableton but uh yeah does this seem to reflect uh any unease or shakiness in in life these days we were talking about cogs arrive cogs awry rather earlier and even the title insecurities and being sent there's something is being conveyed here i think and <laughs> kind of like an off kilter uh sense of things like uh, emotionally maybe even you know you have a do you have a uh, uh, do you have a relationship with stability these days that uh, has surprised you in some way um not to get too <laughs> deep but i'm just curious this is live radio it um, is yeah i guess i'm always been the type of person that feels like a little bit lost all the time um and uh i like to be honest in the music i make but the time that we're living in kind of seems to ask for extra honesty um extra honesty maybe i don't know it's just the world's kind of crazy right now so it it I felt like I needed to be more open than ever. Um, but at the same time, even though like the record deals with a lot of insecurity, and honestly all my records do, <laughs> there's nothing new for me, um, if, it feels very confident production-wise to me. Uh, you know, there's a lot of um, pronoun use in a lot of the songs we just heard you were right i'm thinking of the song try which uh, seems to be, which is the first song on this record which um has this um accusatory tone but i really? can't well maybe what do you think um i hope that it doesn't like i hope that it doesn't seem bitter or accusatory well hmm, maybe that was just my <laughs> reading of it um maybe that's my own sensitivity but there's this sense of outspokenness let's say on this record you say you were trying to make an effort to speak out more um and i assume it changes from song to song is that a general feeling on the record that you're you're just trying to be outspoken about various things um well it's not it's definitely not a like a i don't want to say that it's like a political record and it's not being i don't know if i would use the word outspoken it's just um I'm trying to be, I'm a very shy, introverted person, and I'm trying to be more open than I have previously. Right. Um, in terms of where I'm at. <laughs> uh, but a lot of the songs I'm singing to myself. So, like, try the you in the song is me. Right. That's um, what I was getting at. I wondered if some <laughs> of these pronouns were you. Yes. I, sorry, the pronoun use of you was actually you, Lisa, Master yes, of Sonic Yes, and it's Arts. supposed to be more like a, of a pep talk or uh, right. like get your act together. Right, right. You're sort of objectively talking to yourself yes. via your songs. Yes. Okay. Are you not getting enough support from 
your friends and family should I <laughs> do you need more help I I, I think you're no. great um no I'm doing I'm doing well I think yeah. uh yeah okay. it's just it's a weird the world is pretty wacky um, <laughs> and it's hard to know how to feel do you want to home in on that a little bit <laughs> just the world as a whole is wacky and and hard and I agree with you but uh, hard to know how to feel is that's a bit more complicated I think yeah uh, I don't know I guess it's uh I, yeah I don't even know where to where to start on that but um like do you feel this artistically I, I think a lot of us feel it just living our lives every day now but do yes. you do you feel like it's strange artistically it's a strange sphere to be in even uh I guess in t like songwriting and making art is a pretty indulgent um endeavor in a lot of ways which I kind of struggle with too like yeah it's a really in some ways it's a pretty selfish pursuit um so yeah I mean even w making this record it's like why am I making why am I putting out something like this and why am I making another record right now? But um, is, is it selfish to make something and share it with everyone? I guess not, but is this, like, hopefully, I, I can only hope that these songs move people and, like, and the fact, I think a, an important thing for me was having my name on the recording and production credit uh, of this record, so just on the off chance that there is somebody that isn't a dude that wants to record a thing and feels more confident by the fact that somebody that yeah yeah no I, I i hear what you're saying there that makes sense now my understanding is in the process of making what came to be insecurities and being you had initially just planned to make a like an instrumental record the words weren't quite there the lyrics weren't coming is that right yeah I guess I didn't know if I wanted to make music anymore at all um and I thought that making an instrumental record would be kind of a nice change uh and break but um then I just started singing over top of some of the things and uh, then it was an instrumental record anymore. Now, it w it was the instrumental impulse because... Have you done other kinds of instrumental work, soundtrack work, scoring, anything like that? Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess in school, I, most of my work was instrumental scoring and stuff for dance. Um, and I really enjoy it. Uh, but I guess these things just wanted to be songs, so I let it... I let it happen, um, but I still am working on some instrumental things. Uh, I'm recording, we have a pump organ at our studio, which I'm trying to make a piece out of. Right. Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know it was probably a, 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 a period that maybe stretched on weeks or months, but can you describe, to your recollection, the 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 point where it went from I have nothing to say. These are going to be instrumental pieces to all of a sudden there are words for these pieces. Like, was it a conscious decision or, or did they just sort of appear? Like you, you suddenly, wait a minute, I have things to say here. And they work with these pieces. Like, I, I don't mean to um, get into a, where do your ideas come from? Yeah. But that's striking to me that your intention was sort of supplanted by something. Something happened and you felt compelled to to say something and I'm just curious if you if you can even speak to what sparked that um I don't know I guess I some of the demos I started singing over top of and kind of a process that I use and I know a lot of other uh, songwriters use as well I like sing a scratch vocal um just in gibberish uh and um without words at all um but usually that's kind of awkward to keep <laughs> like that um because i'm not like cigarro so i can't pull that move <laughs> um but uh yeah i guess once the scratch vocal was laid and i 
was attached to the melodic element that my voice added, um, I kind of just had to kick myself in the butt and figure out what I wanted to say from there. Okay, so there wasn't... Um, there a, was no epiphany. There was no specific incident or instance that inspired you to, to, to write in this particular way of giving yourself... It sounds like all, a lot of this is giving yourself some sort of affirmation, like getting you to g do stuff yourself yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah <laughs> snapping yourself out of some kind of yeah because honestly um for me writing music isn't therapeutic um it's what kind of brought me through this record and made me excited about working on music again was thinking about the production huh. thinking about okay. how I was going to make the drum kit thinking about that kind of stuff just starting in a very practical way yeah we should uh don't let me forget i want to go to another song shortly sure uh, because they're great and i want to hear more of them Thank you. but we should talk about wildlife sanctuary sound uh which is the studio you you co-operate right yes yeah so let's don't let me forget that okay but let's go to another song right now what would you like to play um, I would like to play a song called The Art of Staying Tough, which is actually... Wait a minute. How are you going to do this? This. Well... I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. The reason... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just was like, <laughs> wait a minute. This has a guest vocalist it on does, it. It does, uh, which was what I was going to say. This song has a guest vocalist on it. Somebody <laughs> tweeted at me, actually. They're like, I, would l I like this song the best on the record. I was like, thank you. That's flattering to me as a songwriter, but it's also the only song that I don't sing on my record. Um, yeah, I've kind of reclaimed this song, but <laughs> I did write it, so I'm allowed to sing it. Um, and the original uh, vocal is by a producer and vocalist named Casey MQ, right? Yes. From Toronto. Yes. Right. And he, uh, Casey is very gifted. He is. He's annoyingly gifted. Annoyingly gifted. That is a good way of putting it. Yeah. He's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to play The Art of Staying Tough. This is from the new Alcon record, Insecurities in Being, and it's happening live on CFRU. <laughs> you found it and they see who you really are there's all this weight you're surrounded this heavy heart won't go far maybe all you need is some time to yourself till you Say the words 
That was The Art of Staying Tough, performed by Elcon. That is from uh, their new record, Insecurities in Being, and that happened live at CFRU. Lisa, another lovely performance. Thank you. Didn't miss Casey at all, if you ask me. Sorry, Casey. Yeah. He's Taking just, it back. Just took it back. That was... Uh, Maybe I'll release a new cover of me. <laughs> a cover Covering, of... Covering, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as you were singing that song, and I was thinking about our conversation up to this point, um, and I wondered if you think that maybe we are collectively sometimes a bit too hard on ourselves. Uh, that strikes me these days. I feel like we're there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes think it stems from the fact that we're just a little too tough on ourselves. Yes, I would agree. Um, yeah, I definitely <laughs> agree. It's tricky as an artist, I guess, because I'm, you know, I'm excited about this record, but I've also had to like in the last two months deal with a lot of people telling me just in the process of being an independent artist and like trying to find blogs to put to premiere things and uh getting feedback that uh is hard to swallow sometimes where people think that your music is boring or not in not worth posting um so (laughs) it's just an ongoing journey in toughness but uh yes so i mean this is a song that speaks to that impulse do you have anything to impart about i don't know methods that you've come up with to deal like you you're this is what your uh what is maybe your third full-length record really or uh technically my third is elcon but i've made a lot of things under other monikers so i think i'm like approaching a dozen to be honest is that including a lot that includes your work in del bell and other things right Mm -hmm. so you are a veteran i'm a veteran you are not a a rookie that is uh no uh suddenly like what rejection i don't know what this means You've, (laughs) you've had both success and rejection on some oh, level. all the time right so so back to my question as someone who is now a veteran yes do you have advice do you have tactics that you employ to kind of navigate the the stuff that comes with putting something out into the world these days because yes you get some praise you get some neglect you get some criticism like what do you do to deal with that um i guess I've just realized, and I, it's a bigger thing than just um, my work as an artist, but the people and the people are the most important thing, and your community is the most important thing. And I don't know, being a part of things like Kazoo Fest and uh, just even doing something like this, like the that that stuff is the stuff that's the most important thing, and what will keep you grounded um it's very easy to get caught up in the internet stuff but um 
the human IRL stuff is the important stuff. It is. It strikes me, and it's something I think about all the time, that I get riled up by some nebulous, anonymous, I don't even know if it's a real person sometimes, you know. Uh, Like someone might say something that I've never encountered that person before, and yet I'll go out to a show or I'll go to Kazoo Fest and I'll feel love. Like I'll feel actual uh, people, like Mm -hmm. people actually saying uh, whatever it could be criticism too but you're actually hearing from people and yes we're so used to being you know having opinions foisted on us by our machines that uh it's put us in a strange place in terms of processing such things yeah and we're not very connected anymore i find not as much as we need to be like instagram it for sure is really i mean all social media i kind of I know it's not healthy for me, but it's kind of a, a part of the game, unfortunately, with being an artist. But um, Isn't it a part of the game being a person these yeah, days? Yeah, <laughs> and that too. But um, Like I heard your I heard your dog died, so I, I made a sad face on your yeah. social media platform. I didn't call you. I didn't no. reach out. That's weird. Yeah, or I don't know. I've talked to a lot of friends that on Instagram, it seems like they're living like the dreamiest life but are actually super depressed and lonely right but don't reach out right um right yeah because you feel like you're putting something out in the world and that feels like a form of connection but we're not really like we're they are yeah i've been it's a performance it is it is it's all a performance now it feels like there's artifice there it's strange it's a weird thing this got uh, to be a heavy talk I think it's like more so than I was maybe expecting the studio the studio (laughs) you're in a green you're in the green screen dream machine studio I think I'm the only one who calls it that by the way but uh I don't know if there's an official name yeah but uh so people watching this on YouTube are seeing probably all sorts of magical things happening around you and yet here we are having this very serious talk which I think is fine I think that's that's the way to the way of the world as well (laughs) now this record insecurities in being was released by wildlife sanctuary sound recordings uh, and I need to know more about what that means and as I was saying earlier uh, how that follows uh, with with your work as an engineer and a producer as someone who runs uh, their own studio I believe these things are connected can you expand upon this so what that means is that it sounds better to have a name uh, of a record label instead of put, saying independent. Right. Um, <laughs> the label is still just me and I guess Andrew. Um, Andrew Collins. Andrew Collins. Very gifted musician. Very gift. One of those annoyingly gifted people. One of the most talented. <laughs> yes. One of the most talented, underrated musicians and songwriters and guitar players yeah. and multi instrumentalists. Just, just. Yeah, annoyingly amazing at everything he does. Yes. Yeah. It's very frustrating. No, um, no, but it, you're in cahoots. You're, you're partners in crime, right? Yes. Right. We are in cahoots, but I feel like thing. yeah, <laughs> this is turning into a gush fest about Andrew. But, <laughs> well, um, I wish he was here. I miss Andrew and... Uh, yeah, he better listen to this. Yeah, hopefully he does, yeah. But we have a studio together um, north, about an hour north of Guelph called wildlife sanctuary sound um yeah it's just been like a slow burning ongoing project we just are slowly accumulating gear and have wonderful people pass through um and I recorded everything on the record up at the studio myself. Now you, you, I think you alluded to this earlier. Your impulse uh, at some point in your musical trajectory was to learn more about how to record things and how to capture them. Yeah, I've been recording, I guess, since I was thirteen. Um, but until recently, just kind of felt like I was just making demos and. I uh, didn't feel confident enough to actually just call myself an engineer out loud. Um, but yeah, it's been a long haul. Are you, are you feel like, I know we've talked a lot about confidence and asserting yourself and, and all these things. Are you feeling better about that stuff since the release of this record and, and how it's been received and, and even putting some of these ideas and thoughts into these songs? Like, are you feeling more confident now? Um, yeah, I am. I yeah I mean 
as a human, I'm always up and down, but yes, I'm feeling more confident, uh, technically for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, like even just going to things, workshops where you th- being in situations where you think you're not going to know everything or anything and then realizing that not everybody knows how to use Pro Tools or record a thing is helpful for confidence. <laughs> well, lest, lest anyone think that you are uh, some, you know, uh, totally under the radar, uh, you know, shy person that is whatever. I just want to read some credits here. You were selected to be part of the renowned Red Bull Music Academy in Berlin, which is happening this fall, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, they're flying me there, they're which is really nice. There you go. You've been nominated for a SoCan Songwriting Prize. And uh, it says here that uh, occasionally, shyly, you will reveal that your high school band was nominated for a Canadian Folk Music Award for an album that was self-produced and recorded. So you're not... You know what you're doing. (laughs) Other people think you know what you're doing. Yes. You're not on some deserted island on your own sending, you know, your songs out into the world via, you know, bottles. Uh, Feels like that sometimes, but yes. Yeah, but you're not alone in feeling alone either. Yeah, I guess it's, I mean, a lot of people have imposter syndrome as well. I don't know if you ever get that. What do you mean ever? (laughs) Have it constantly. Exactly. So it's, yeah, it's a case of imposter syndrome. And then I guess also a case of, um, be it like studio environments. Um, I've been very lucky to work with some very lovely, uh, men who are feminists, but, um, studio environments typically, uh, are kind of a bro scene yeah um so i've just felt like i've had to like extra prove myself uh, in every way right so you we've talked about how you've established yourself and asserted yourself you just alluded to the feminist bros or no (laughs) the (laughs) feminist men uh can you maybe cite some of the people that helped you make this record yes um well uh my partner Andrew Collins, who we gush had a gush fest about already, mm-hmm. plays a number of instruments. Um, uh, Long term collaborator Jordan Howard, also Guelph royalty, uh, plays guitar. Um, Karen Ng, who's like my favorite saxophone player in the world uh, and such a lovely human, plays uh, clarinet and saxophone and johnny merritt also from guelph uh plays drums and then his dad i mix the record with his dad scott merritt in guelph nice and did you kind of bring johnny out of retirement so to speak yeah i did i think he's back in retirement though oh no he won't play Um, with you well he's having another child oh i didn't know that yeah which is really exciting but um yeah he's kind of focusing on family stuff you know um, how old this makes me feel i used to drive <laughs> johnny when johnny was in a band called the bar mitzvah brothers he was like 14 years old 13 years old i don't know what he was but maybe younger he was playing drums in a band and i would i would be the driver i would drive them around ontario yeah. and now you're saying he has two kids or, or not yet he's about but to almost, have, that's yeah. a, a remarkable thing it's, yeah well he's like 30 something right no i know <laughs> i know how time works i know he's old enough to do it i'm not saying he's yeah. 13 having two kids i just think it's weird it's it is weird. strange to hear well it's a remarkable assortment of people and this is a wonderful wonderful record so congratulations yes. and on oh him. casey as well i guess oh I yes casey casey, casey yeah. mq yes who we've already kind of gushed about yeah. as well now where can people learn more about you and and this record People can learn more on that dreaded internet, um, <laughs> elconofficial.com. And I recently changed all of my social media things to be the same because um, I'm organized like that. You are. So it's all Elcon Official everywhere Facebook, Instagram, all the stuff. I probably am lying. I'm not lying on Instagram, but I'm probably like not looking as cool as it, I'm trying to seem um, on Instagram, but still follow me. And yeah, Bandcamp, yeah. iTunes, Spotify, add me to your Spotify playlist, please. <laughs> I appreciate your, uh, your, your candor and I appreciate you and your work. So thank you for uh, spending time with me today. I, I thought we would end uh, 
the uh, show with one final performance if you can sure, do you yeah. want to play one more Totes. song what do, what do you want to play um i would want to i will play there was a glow <laughs> <laughs> okay there was a glow this is the second song on insecurities and being is there anything yes. you want to say about it before we hear it um I don't know. No. Oh, there's Twin Peaks references in here. But oh. My diction is bad, so you probably won't catch it. Well, me. no, I think we will. All right, okay. look out for that. This was, uh, there was, this is rather, There Was a Glow uh, by El Khan from Insecurities and Being. Lisa, thank you so much for being on the show thanks and best for of luck with me. everything. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Keep floating. Fine. There's no secret To what it is And what it's meant to be I don't understand There was a glow In the sky Shifting a slight and the boat caps eyes a star a sign fetch your arms cause the way it comes Sure.